Hey everyone, welcome. Today I want to talk about vitamin E and heart disease. I prompted this conversation on YouTube because I have a blog post called five vitamins that remove plaque from arteries. Before we begin, I just want to introduce myself to those who are just finding my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Rothenstein. I'm a cardiovascular dietitian. My role is to help reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, manage heart-related conditions to avoid future complications. So let's dive in. Before we begin, I just wanted to emphasize that we do not want to remove plaque from arteries. I know that's kind of a big thing that many people are typing into Google. What we actually want is to stabilize plaque and prevent progression of plaque. You can have plaque in your arteries, and as long as it's stable and staying on the outer edges of your arteries, you can live a long and healthy life. I want to dive into vitamin E because in the literature, it has been very controversial in terms of supplementation in, in seeing if that's going to help stabilize plaque formation. I'm going to share my screen for a second so you can see um, a visual of why it is cardioprotective. So here we go. Let me just share my screen with you and we will get started. So here is vitamin E, an overview of vitamin E. Vitamin E plays a super important role from an antioxidant perspective in relation to oxidative stress. So when you have ox excess oxidative stress, when there's this imbalance in your body where you have too much free radicals and not enough of those antioxidants, that can cause LDL, ApoB to become oxidized in the arterial wall leading to plaque formation and progression and destabilization. So vitamin E is one of many different types of antioxidants that help to address oxidative stress to help mitigate the atherosclerotic process. When we look at the literature, though, there's a lot of research that shows that it can help and then others that say it can harm in supplemental form. And this has to do with many things that we need to take into consideration when we are assessing a vitamin D in vitamin E intake and how it works in the body. So in this study that I just referenced, I'm going to share my screen one more time to show you. Here is the differences in what we need to assess when we're trying to figure out, hey, is it going to be beneficial or not beneficial to you? So duration, what other medications you're taking? Are you on a PSK9 inhibitor? Are you on a statin? Are you on... Do you have acute inflammation? Do you have low-grade inflammation? All of these are part of the assessment for vitamin e, vitamin e supplementation. But to go further to understand, vitamin E is super beneficial from an oxidative stress standpoint, but you can get it through your diet. And that's what we really want to aim for. So vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin, and it's found in things like avocado, fatty fish, almonds, wheat germs. We want to make sure you're getting it in your diet for the most part. And some people need more requirements if they have a deficiency, depending on their age, depending on their medical history. But if you're looking to supplement with vitamin D, I would take great caution because higher doses can be harmful. It can lead to toxicity. But more than that, if you think about it, a lot of the vitamin E supplements that are out there are in an oil base because vitamin E is a fat soluble vitamin. And so for absorption benefit, they want to put it into a fat, an oil immersion. And that oil can go rancid by the time it goes from manufacturer to your home. Um, because it is highly oxidized, it can go rancid. And then you're inputting that in your body, which can lead to other issues as well. We have seen some studies that show certain high-dose vitamin E supplementation can also increase the risk of heart failure. So we need to be cautious with supplements. And when we talk about vitamins and minerals, my main goal is for you to get that through nutrition so that your body can utilize it more effectively and it can give the benefits without the potential harm. If you want to go into supplements and assess if that's an option for you, I highly recommend working with a cardiovascular dietitian who can look at your medication, look at your medical history, look at your age, your gender, your lifestyle, your diet, and assess what are necessary and what are not necessary. A lot of people think more is more when it comes to supplements, and that's really not true. You can get toxicity. It can interfere with certain drugs, but also your poor liver has to metabolize it. And your liver has so many important 
functions that you don't want to overburden it with a high supplement dose. It can also cause a lot of kidney um, burden and that can lead to kidney disease long-term too. So please, if you're on supplements, make sure that you are being, you're looking through them with your healthcare team who understands nutrient metabolism in order for you to ensure that that supplement is going to be beneficial versus harmful to you. I hope this was helpful. Feel free to follow me on YouTube. Check out my website, entirelynourished.com. If you want to need or need assistance in heart health and you want to prevent cardiovascular disease, complications. You want to prevent and stabilize plaque formation. I highly recommend you check out my services. I have a group program that goes through how to get all these nutrients through food for optimal cardiovascular health. Until next time, have a wonderful day and we'll talk again soon.